Welcome volleyball fans, I'm Jason Andera. And I'm Jody Norston. It's great to have you all join us for another volleyball season. Jandy and I will bring you a complete look at prep volleyball in North and South Dakota in the next 30 minutes. We'll show you how we voted in the preseason media polls and we'll cue you in on the top players and prospects across the Dakotas. That's right, Jody. And we have some great players to talk about. We're going to get to your talent in North Dakota in a few minutes, but we're going to start right here in the South. This player is following in the footsteps of Bismarck Century's Lauren Ware and has decided to play volleyball and basketball at the Division I level. It's Sioux Falls, Washington's Sydney Shetnan. I remember I talked to you during basketball season, right before basketball season, and I asked you about how recruiting was going, and you said, I might play both sports, but that would be really tough. I don't <laughs> think that's going to be a possibility. So it's something to that effect. But obviously something changed. Yeah. What changed, and, and what made you take on this big, this big adventure? So I got through volleyball season, I got through basketball season, and I'm like, it got down to a couple schools, and I'm like, I'm not sure if I can even choose a sport at this point, because volleyball is so much fun, basketball is so much fun, I can't really pick. Mm -hmm. And then I got offered both scholarships from both schools, so I'm like, why not? They're awesome coaches, awesome staff. Their campus is amazing. So, so my, when I was 13, uh, my coach was um, Dan, she's the Augustana head coach. Mm -hmm. So he went down there and he's like, hey, Danny, the head coach at Louisville Volleyball, he's like, hey, you should go look at this six foot three, 14 year old girl. And they're like, okay. So they looked at me, offered me a scholarship a couple years later. And then basketball, I still, I can't really remember how they got into there, but I remember I gave him a call about in May, and then just kept talking from there, I think. Yeah. They're working together really well. You've always been an exceptionally talented, but you people don't understand you have to work hard, too. It's not just yeah. you can't be 6'4 and just walk into a gym and be good. I've seen a lot of s tall players that have not been good. Talk about the work that has to go into becoming a D1 athlete at two levels. Um, I mean, I did a lot of work. Right now, today, I'm doing shooting every single day. I'm doing volleyball every single day. Um, during basketball season, I'm also doing volleyball. During volleyball season, I'm also doing basketball. So it's a lot of figuring out your schedule and just you, you're doing work every single day. There's really no off day. But one thing I've picked up just from a couple conversations I've had with you is you, you've got a competitive streak. Just talk about your competitive nature. Some people, it's second nature. Some people, they have to really work themselves up to be competitive. Where are you at? I think, I think I'm super competitive. Like when I play sports with my family, um, it's always super competitive. I never really noticed it until I go play with like someone else. Like if I'm playing spike ball, I'm my family's super competitive, and then I go play with someone else. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, you guys, you guys don't do this. And I'm, I'm guess I'm more competitive than the you average person. <laughs> Sydney is one of several players in South Dakota ready to lead her team to a title run. Here are my top ten volleyball players in Class AA entering the season. Tenley Buttonhagen enters her senior year as the leader of Huron. Brooklyn Kusler is a multi-sport athlete, but she says volleyball is her favorite and it really shows. You can't go wrong with the two setters like Bergen and Reagan. Bergen is the state's top recruit as a sophomore, and Reagan is heading to NDSU next year to keep setting. Sydney Shetnan of Washington is more than just a 6'5 outside hitter. She's a terrific athlete and a ferocious competitor. Elizabeth Denovan had a great sophomore season and is ready to lift Roosevelt into contention as their junior setter. Lincoln has an ace in their libero, Bryn Kirsch. OG gets a lot of attention for the Rileys, but Bryn Askew should get some credit too. You won't be able to key on just Sydney Shetnan when you're playing Washington. Ellie Walker should have an outstanding junior season. Maggie Hayes was the most important underclassman on last year's championship team, and she'll lead the Arrows at their outside hitter. Let's move to Class A. Ellie Brozick is heading into her junior year with a lot of talent. Abby Brooks is dominant in the middle. Her timing and reach are tools that no other middle blocker in the class can match. Abby Brunsing is an all-state outside hitter. Abby Glanzer was our Class A Player of the Year last year. She may be the top overall player in Class A once again. Kelsey Hurd is the setter that makes the Sioux Falls Christian Chargers go. Riley Freeland continues to improve. 
Brooklyn Pater is a middle blocker and plays great defense. Rachel Rosenquist had a great state tournament and is ready to bring the noise once again this year. Sydney Timms of Sioux Falls Christian gives the Chargers a top line front line. Dakota Valley has another player on this list, Taylor Wilshire, top libero in the class. And finally in class B, Kenna Brown of Chester. Ayana Bird is one of the top middle blockers in the state. Jade Hutchinson helped Kadoka to 27 wins last year. Hannah Krogh of Elkton Lake Benton was the Brookings Register Player of the Year. How about Cameron Logan? She's a terrific multi-sport athlete. Copper Lurt of Phillip was an honorable mention All-State player as a sophomore with over 400 kills. Peyton Milius of Falkton area, a great all-around player. Ava Nielsen was All-State as an eighth grader last year and she continues to get stronger. Chesney Oliver of Ipswich is one of the top Libros in Class B. Sydney Shell is a leader for the best team in the state in Northwestern. Don't forget, Jody will be here later in the show with a look at North Dakota. But when we come back, we'll unveil who we think are the top teams in South Dakota with our power rankings. This high school preview show on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics and Nyberg's Ace. Welcome back to our Varsity Sports High School Volleyball Preview Show. After talking to several coaches and taking into account who has the best returning squads, it's time to take a tour on how I voted in the volleyball media poll. We'll start in Class AA. Last season, O'Gorman and Watertown battled it out all the way from the summer team camps to the last set at the state tournament. Watertown pulled out the state title but after graduating most of their team, it opens up a path for the Knights to take over. Obviously last year was a little heartbreaking to lose at State, but we're just excited for the season. We have a lot of like returners coming back. So and most of us have like played. We played a lot last year, like all together. So we're just hoping that this year will be finally the year where we can just pull all together and win at the end. Our hitters coming up are very good and they will do what we need them to in order to get us back to where we want to be. I'm excited. I think that it'll be fun this year just to like get to run a 6-2 again with Reagan and like get some more hits in just like because last year was my first time ever hitting in like a real game. So this year I'm more experienced and I've been working on it more. So I'm excited. O'Gorman gets the nod at number one. They move the needle with two sharp setters and they can both hit as well. They'll miss having that heavy hitting Emma Ronsick in the middle, but with the addition of Isabel Steffel and Grace Benkford back, they will have some power. Washington should be improved despite losing two Division I players. They'll be young, but by the end of the season, Sydney Shetnan and Ellie Walker should have this team in contention. Lincoln should turn the corner and make a big leap this year. They've got Chloe Brown, Sydney Whitefield, Bailey Plort and Bryn Kirsch. They give their team leadership and stability, something they haven't had in a while. Roosevelt will be back in the hunt as well. Look for Abby Ward and Maya Vandervek to become big hitters for the Riders. Plus, they have Liz Denovan setting them up. Aberdeen has a great group of seniors led by Brooklyn Kusler. Um, we have huge expectations. We have a big senior class, and I think we've always, like the last couple years, we've been so close. But like this year is our year. Like we don't have another one after this. So it's a good year for us. I think we have a really good chance to go pretty far this year, and I'm excited. Don't count out Harrisburg, Huron, or Rapid City Stevens either. In Class A, Sioux Falls Christian had a memorable championship win last season. They fought back in the title match and secured their ninth state championship in the last 13 years. And so they just, they all love the game, have played it a lot and, and play well together. Dakota Valley came up just short last year and they're hungry to get back to the championship. Winner has a ton back from their 27 and 6 team last year. Madison is in position to challenge the top teams in the class. Rapid City Christian won 30 games last year. In Class B, the conversation usually starts and ends with Northwestern. Uh, you know, we just had a magical season, you know. Um, you know, we've never been undefeated. I mean, it was just really just a dream season. Uh, for these kids, it's, 
it's different, you know, and I think they want to, you know, figure out what their roles are and how they can contribute and what our team will look like. Falton made quite a run last season, and although they lost a lot of leadership, they returned one of the best players in the state. Like, a lot of players coming back. We did graduate our, like, three or four good, super good, important people who we relied on a lot, but yeah, there's a lot of gaps that we have to fill, so we're really just focusing on showing showing the younger girls kind of like how the, the attitude they should have every day at practice and stuff like that. Warner has restocked the cupboard yet again. They're always good, but with several big time talents back, including Jada Kenyon, Brecken Ewell, and All-State setter Kenna Brown, they could make a jump to great. Ethan should be set for a charge into the state tournament. That's a look at South Dakota. Next, Jody sets you up in North Dakota. Stay with us. Volleyball is one of the ultimate team sports. If everyone's not chipping in, you suffer. If there's a lack of communication, it's noticeable. For Jamestown senior and returning All-State player Grace Hagerly, she understands these fundamentals better than most, and she has her family to thank. Ask Jamestown senior outside hitter Grace Hagerly why her team's confidence level is high this season, and the answer has little to do about the team's actual skill level. Our team is like a family, and we trust each other so much that if I'm going through something or anyone's going through something, I look for my team. For Grace, team and family have a tendency to blend together, a natural feeling when your head coach has known you from diapers to driver's ed. She's like my best friend, so when I get to come to practice every day after a hard day of school and I see her, it's just like comforting, you know? I can go up and give her a hug. Sarah Hagerly has been the head volleyball coach at Jamestown High for a decade and is coaching a daughter for a second time. I love coaching my kids. You know, I, I also really like not coaching them. In basketball, when I get to go and watch and just be a mom and she can come up to me after the game and be sad or happy on occasion. Um, but mostly happy. I mean, I just, I like being a mom, but I really love just being able to be around her all the time. And Together, mom and daughter helped Jamestown to an impressive 26-7 and record last year and a fifth place finish at state. Impressive year, but at the same time, another volleyball team in town was putting together a record-breaking season with dad at the helm. He jokes and says I'm you know he's the second best coach in our house you know but it really is he's 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 wonderful. John Hagerly coached the University of Jamestown to a 33 win season including the program's first trip to the NAIA national semifinal round. Me and my, um, another senior Rachel Sheely her sister is on that team so when they reached to the final four we got in our car at 4 a.m. with my mom and my sister and we drove all the way to Iowa to watch. I think the best thing that you can hope for in a season is that that from where you start to where you're in there's significant growth and that's what it takes to have a season like that. He's just watching him grow as a coach being here you know he's he used to be a bit of a yeller um, and you can ask any one of his former players you know he he would he'd take a time out and ask his huddle to huddle around him so that the crowd couldn't hear him yelling at his team and that wasn't that long ago um, they, followed, they definitely bought into what he was selling, and, uh, but I do think that age has helped us both just realize what's important. When you're a coach, you get enough people saying, you should be doing this, you should be doing this, you should be doing this, and you need more people that are saying, hey, you did a great job. I really appreciate what you're doing, and so I think it's more of a supportive type of a thing. Um, I don't think we do a, a ton of volleyball talk um, at home. We do a ton of athletics talk at home and there's times Grace has to say or someone has to say, okay, can we talk about something else? Together they've helped volleyball not only become the talk of their own home, but the talk of the town. I think it might be biased for me though because my head's always in volleyball and our whole family's head is always in volleyball. So when I think of Jamestown, I obviously, UJ, I think of like the volleyball program. I think of the high school, I think of the volleyball program because that's just like what we're so involved with. But I think for other people, it's probably also the volleyball program. It's just because we try to make it like the most comfortable place and the most comfortable program in the school. We want everyone to feel welcome, and that's why we just have so many numbers coming in every year. They are North Dakota's top volleyball family, that's for sure. If you thought the pandemic would stop Grace from working on her game, think again. She went and got some quick dry cement, found some old tires, painted some wooden posts, and take a look at the result. That is one heck of a DIY project. Nice going, Grace. 
Grace is one of the names you see on my top players to watch list in Class A. Check out the full lineup here. Aaron Binstock should have West Fargo in contention again. She's one of three returning players that earned first team All-State honors last year throughout the state. Cheyenne's Jaden Feist and Century's Julia Fitter were the other two. Feist is committed to play at MSU Moorhead next season after erupting for over 400 kills as a junior. Meanwhile, Fitterer has been such a steady leader for the Patriots, a four-year starter that'll play hoops at you Mary. Hattie Fitterer, who's not even related to Julia, has been starting for three seasons on that Century squad. Both Julia and Hattie averaged over eight kills per contest last season. Bismarck's Mackenzie Moser, Mandan's Piper Harris, and Red River's Alex Page are ones to watch. Hagerly's teammate, Ella Roldson, she's coming off a leg injury early in the summer, but should be back after averaging more than 11 kills and one and a half blocks per match last year. Grace Solberg should be a force again after helping lead Davies to the state title as a junior. On to the Class B side, returning first team all state choices, Brooke and Sarah Blessum should have rugby right back in contention. The Panthers were the victim of a tough region last year, losing to our Redeemers for the trip to state. Julia Dusak is a player the teams always have to game plan against when facing Grafton. Morgan Friggy is not only one of the most talented players in the state, she's also one of the toughest. Last year as a sophomore, she played in the Regent Basketball Tournament six days after having surgery to remove her appendix. She'll be one of the top hitters for the defending champs from Langdon Edmore Munich. North Stars Danielle Hagler was an All-Stater as a freshman and followed that up with a strong sophomore campaign. Good luck if you're on the receiving end of one of her kills. Senior setter Sadie Hansen has been part of those outstanding Oaks teams in recent years. And the same could be said for setter Mackenzie Hughes of Thompson. Junior setter Eden Olson dished out around 1,000 assists last year and finished with more than 300 digs. And we finished the list up with a couple more first team all state picks from last year. And Lexi Olson from the defending state champs and Amaya Willer of Trinity. We've given you the players to watch. Now it's time to unveil the team rankings. That's next on Midco Sports Network. This high school preview show on Midco Sports Network is presented by Nyberg's Ace and Avera Orthopedics. Well, last year's state champions in North Dakota ended up pulling off some pretty unique feats, if you think about it. In Class A, Fargo Davies won its first state title while ending Bismarck Century's run of four straight. Meanwhile, Langdon Edmore Munich not only captured the Class B Volleyball State Championship, but many of the girls from that same team helped the basketball team go undefeated in the winter to capture another crown. Who will reign supreme in 2020? In Class A, not much of a shocker here, but I'm throwing Century back to the top. They have a strong group of seniors led by the fitters who we profiled in our players to watch. You have to go all the way back to 2010 to find the last state championship game that didn't involve Century. The head coach feels her team is ready to go. I think carrying around for straight, you know, state championships was a lot to carry. You know, and I still think that team accomplished a lot of great things. And I think that they left a really good legacy and a strong legacy. Um, so I just hope that we can uphold that with this group and that um, we can have a little bit more fun. At number two, I'm going with Jamestown. You heard from the Hagerly family earlier. Grace and her teammate Ella Rolson both fired over 350 kills last season. This Blue Jays team is going to be tough to deal with. No matter how many people graduate and how many new people come up, we've all been playing together forever like even in the open gyms like we like to mix it up so everyone's comfortable with each other and especially with like the teams before and years previous they've all had strong leadership so it's easy to like fill in those shoes because you're used to that kind of leadership so you know what to do. I tab West Fargo at number three with a strong core coming back the Packers have a great chance to win the EDC. They'll have to deal with the defending state champs though. Returning all state pick Grace Solberg is back to lead Davies. She has a lot of experience to her name and she'll have the Eagles soaring high. It's really exciting that I do have that experience playing in the past couple years, but it really just makes me want to better my teammates and give them the experience that I have so that they can learn too. 
I'm going with Mandan over other strong candidates, Legacy and Red River, for the fifth spot. Over to Class B, pretty easy choice here. Callie Ronigan might have graduated last year, but Langdon at Moore Munich is still stacked. Lexi Olsen and Morgan Fridgey are back to lead the cast of outstanding hitters. They'll be wearing the bullseye as the defending state champs, but they say, eh, that's no problem. It was just an unbelievable atmosphere, not only in this school, but in this town. A lot of pride from the community in, in what our sports teams were able to do. And, uh, you know, we got, we got athletes now coming back. We lost some great ones, but we got some coming back that really want to go and do it again. I think our community really helps our fans. Everyone's really supportive, but also you have the pressure of trying to keep it going, I guess. <laughs> I know these next two play in the same region, but I feel our Redeemers in rugby still deserve to be top three teams. The Region 6 race is going to be entertaining. Linton HMB might be one of those under the radar teams. Juniors JC Richter and Tegan Scher are terrific players and the Lions seem to be a program that's about to take off with that talent in the senior and junior classes. They'll have Carrington and Oaks to contend with when it's all said and done though. Northern Cass earns my final top five spot. Look for seniors like Morgan Nelson, Sarah Yoni and Macy Danielson to lead the way. That's a look at my preseason rankings. We'll see how silly I look when the season wraps up. When we come back, Jandy and I put a wrap on our fall preview night. Jody, we've got a lot more coverage coming their way, don't we? Yeah, we'll be out to, at games and be doing uh, throwing together some features throughout the season. So uh, let's just get this season rolling, right? Excited for volleyball season. Hopefully we make it all the way through the year. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you out there on the court.